Number six then from the 2017 Mathematics and Mechanics. Again, another four mark question here. Here we go. Rotational motion. A ride at amusement park consists of a hollow cylinder, this is looking down the top of it, of radius 3.5 metres, which rotates about its vertical axis of symmetry at 4 radians per second. There's somebody standing on the floor. When that's lowered, that person's got to remain at rest. This is the side view, so, not, so that means they don't slip down, they're going to be stuck onto it. What's the minimum coefficient of friction to prevent the person from slipping? Now the first thing is this. If you're in a rotating system, and remember, the natural inertia for a body is to continue in a straight line unless acted on by an unbalanced force. Two balanced forces, of course, would keep it straight. Rotating this way, if you were this person, without that wall holding you in, you would just carry on in that same direction. So there's a force, an unbalanced force, acting in towards the centre, to force you off of that line, to force you to keep staying on the circumference of that circle. Notice, there's no opposing force to that cancelling out. If there was an opposing force, then you would just carry on in the same direction. So you've got this reaction here, the centripetal, the one towards the centre. Same reaction as it's the reaction of the wall preventing the body's inertia from bursting through it to continue on its straight line path. Vertically, You've got your weight acting downwards, and the only way that you would stop slipping down would be if the force of friction were sufficient to prevent that. So I'll put all three in this diagram. So there's the reaction of the wall. Notice it's not a static diagram because you're rotating. It's not like a weight sitting on the floor. You're in a rotating system. There's no opposing force here, which means sometimes you do this there's a resultant acceleration here. I'll well, put it all together. Let's take some of the forces. So, some of the forces in the y direction, taking that as positive, would be you've got the force of friction minus the weight should equal zero if you're stuck there. So there's no slippage in that direction. So there is no motion in that direction. That simply means then the force of friction must equal and the weight will be mg. Now, it's not quite a mark for that yet because there's another part to add on. Now the forces radially will make it act in that way. The force radially is this reaction here which I've called R and that's all there is. And that's unbalanced, and that's going to provide this acceleration. That's going to provide the acceleration m times a, forces mass times acceleration. Now, since you've got radius and you've got omega here, then we might as well make that then. That means that r is equal to m omega squared r. Now, those aren't the two equations quite yet, because there's one more connection. There's the coefficient of friction to pop in somewhere, and that comes from this. The force of friction will be mu, the coefficient of friction, times that normal reaction, times r. And it's these three parts that you're going to put together. So we've got equation one there, and we've got equation two. And from that one, we can replace it in here. So you've got mu r equals mg. That was using number one. Using number two, mu m omega squared r equals mg. But at that point, that's definitely where they put the third mark. It's just the first two marks weren't quite clear. I'll put one for that, and then one for tying it together by doing this. And we'll just mention again, that came from equation one by replacing F with mu R. That came from equation two by replacing the R here with this. Now the M's are going to cancel, so you're left with this then. Mu is going to be omega squared R over to the other side, g divided by omega squared r. Now put the numbers in. You could have put them in earlier. 9.8 over, and that was just 4 squared times 3.5, which when you pop it in gives you 0 0.175 for the, the minimum coefficient of friction. If it was any less, you would slip down. If it was any greater, you wouldn't slip up. If it was any greater, you'd still just be stuck there at a slow rotational speed.